In this task, you will deploy a new fungible token on Hedera Smart Contract Service, or HSTS, and transfer it from one account to another. You'll be using VM, SolC, JSON RPC, and Solidity to create, compile, deploy, verify, and interact with the token. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel Engineer at Hashgraph, and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video, as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash Hedera Dev slash Hedera Tokens CYOA tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the Choose Your Own Adventure Style Hedera Tokens tutorial where you'll learn how to mint and transfer tokens, the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Let's switch to the Gitpod instance that we have previously set up. Let's begin this task by opening the file token-hscs slash script-token slash hscs.js. This is the script that we're going to run. Note the import statements at the top when, where we're making use of the VM library. This is a standard EVM library called VM and can be used to interact with any EVM network such as Ethereum and with HSCS on Hedera. We will not be using the Hedera SDK in the script. Go to the terminal and enter the following commands. cd token dash HSCS, then type dot slash script, then press tab for autocomplete followed by return. This starts running the script you will see some initial output that indicates the script has started running and confirmation that it has parsed some information from the .n file. Next, you'll see a line in purple with a line underneath it saying, hit the return key when ready to proceed. These pause the execution of the script to make it easy to follow along with what is being run, specifically so that you can match up which lines of code are about to be executed next. Note that instead of initializing a client object via the Hedera SDK, we will be initializing the client object in this script using the create wallet client method from VM. To do so, we pass in the operator account credentials, a config for the Hedera testnet, which will include things like chain ID and transport configuration, which essentially points to the Hedera JSON RPC relay instance that is running in the background. In the next section, we will be checking Solidity Smart Contract source code. Let's open the file named my underscore token dot sol. This is a very minimal ERC20 implementation. In the terminal, hit return to run the section. We print out the first few characters of that file as a quick sense check. Next, let's load the EVM bytecode plus ABI which are the SOLC outputs. This is going to error because we have not yet compiled the Solidity file and therefore the .abi and the .bin files that the script expects are not available on disk. And we should see this error. To rectify this, let's compile the Solidity file and then rerun the script. In the terminal, enter the command npm run compile-smart-contract. Once this is done, enter dot slash script, then press tab for autocomplete, followed by return to run the script again. This time, since the files are there, we'll get past that error, and it prints out the first few characters um, of each of those files. Next, we'll perform a quick check for JSON RPC endpoint liveness. In other words, is the Hedera JSON RPC relay working? The code here makes two RPC requests that get the latest block number on the network and the balance of our operator account. Hit return to run the section. It prints those values after receiving responses. Just FYI, you can check on the RPC relay terminal and see its log output in case anything goes awry here. Back in the main terminal, we see that we've received responses and these values for block number and balance have been printed. We're now satisfied that the RPC endpoint is indeed live. We've got the bytecode to deploy in hand and the RPC connection running, so we're ready to deploy the smart contract. 
To do so, we submit an EVM transaction over RPC. Hit return to run this section. We use the deploy contract method on the client and pass in the bytecode, the ABI, and the constructor arguments, which in this case are the token symbol and token name. This returns the transaction hash, and we use that to print the hash scan URL for the deployment transaction. Right after, we use the get transaction receipt method, passing in the transaction hash, and from this obtain the transaction receipt. This contains the smart contract's deployed address, and we use that to print its hash scan URL. Use command click or control click to open the URL for the deployment address in a browser tab. In the new browser tab, we can see the hashscan.io slash testnet slash contract um, URL followed by the smart contract ID. If we look at the contract bytecode section, we'll see a wall of hexadecimal text. This is the EVM bytecode. It is good to know that it is there, but it, that is not particularly useful to us. For example, if we scroll down, we'll see a section named events, but it is very hard to make sense of anything here. Let's switch back to Gitpod. There is a solution to this, which is to verify the smart contract. Verification is the idea that you submit the source code of the smart contract to the Network Explorer, which will then independently verify if that smart contract source code corresponds to the EVM bytecode that has already been deployed to this particular address. If verification passes, in addition to the EVM bytecode that was previously there, the Network Explorer should now also be able to display the ABI and the Solidity source code. Hashcan, the Network Explorer that we're using, exposes an API to do this programmatically via its own implementation of Sourceify. This has been wrapped up into a utility function called Verify on Sourceify for us, and we can check out what it does under the hood if we like. After verification is successful, let's go back to the same Hashcan browser tab for the smart contract that we opened earlier, for the smart contract that we just deployed. Let's refresh this page. If we look in the contract bytecode section now, we see that something has changed. Note also that verification status is full match. Now we'll see that we have those additional tabs for ABI and source, and clicking on those, we see that the ABI is presented as an interactive form. We can also see the Solidity source code. If we look in the event section now, we'll notice that something has changed here too. Instead of arbitrary hexadecimal values here, we'll see the names of the events and the parsed values of the event parameters. This is possible because the verification process submits the original Solidity source code, the .sol file, plus the compiler settings, the .metadata.json file. This allows Hashcan to not only have the source code, but also the ABI. Verification, thus, makes the smart contract page on Hashcan much more useful and user-friendly. Let's switch back to Gitpod. Now we have our ERC20 token smart contract deployed on Hedera testnet and verified on Hashcan to boot. It's time to interact with it. Let's start by transferring some tokens from our operator account to another account. We do so by submitting an EVM transaction over RPC. Hit return to run the section. We use the write contract method on the client and pass in the deployed address of the smart contract, its ABI, the function name, and the function arguments which in this case are the to address and the amount of tokens to transfer. This results in the transaction hash, and we use that to print the hashcan URL for the smart contract function invocation transaction. In other words, the transfer transaction. Use command click or control click to open the transfer transaction URL in a browser tab. In the new browser tab, we can see the URL hashcan.io slash testnet slash transaction followed by the transaction ID. We see that the type is Ethereum transaction. We also see that status is success, which means that the smart contract function invocation was successful and the intended state change has indeed occurred. 
in the, contra in the contract result section, we see all of the fields of an EVM transaction, highlighting a few of them. The from address is the operator account. The to address is the smart contract address. I should say the EVM address of the ERC20 token. The signature identifies which function on the smart contract is being invoked. The input lists the parameters passed into the smart contract function, in this case the recipient account and the amount of tokens. Note that the to field on the transaction is not the same as the recipient field in the function arguments. These are sometimes mixed up. The output lists the return values from the smart contract function, in this case true, as the transfer was successful. In the event section, we see an event log. This, the first field is a signature hash, which identifies the event, in this case, transfer. And the remaining fields are the parameters of the event, in this case, the from address, the to address, and the value number. Let's switch back to Gitpod. At this point, we have interacted with the network twice, and both times we have changed the state of the network. The first time was to deploy a new smart contract. The second time was to invoke a function on that smart contract. But this is not the only type of interaction possible. We can also interact with the network without changing its state. In other words, simply querying its state. Let's do just that by submitting an EVM request to query the balance of the token. To do so, we submit an EVM query over RPC. We use the read contract method on the client, pass in the address, the ABI, the function name, and the function arguments. The function name is balance of, the function argument is the EVM address of the accounts that we that just received the tokens during the previous transfer smart contract function invocation transaction. This returns a query result object, which in this case is a simple number, the token balance of the account. If this is your first time running the script, the value should be 100 n. Note that the n suffix is a JavaScript notation for big int, which is used to represent the unsigned integer 256 or uint 256 type from Solidity because the regular number in JavaScript cannot represent numbers that large. We see that our token HSCS task is complete. Congratulations on making it this far. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you have made your pick. If you're not done the HTS token task next, I recommend doing that one next. Otherwise, I recommend doing the interrupt task next. Either way, see you in the next one.